This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We turn now to look at an historic climate lawsuit against the U.S. government. With the help of our Children's Trust, a group of 21 young people, all under the age of 21, have filed a lawsuit alleging the government has failed to take necessary action to curtail fossil fuel emissions. Earlier this year, at the March for Science, which was held on Earth Day in Washington, D.C., I spoke to Julia Olson, executive director and chief legal counsel for our Children's Trust, and some of her young clients. I'm Julia Olson. I'm the executive director of our Children's Trust, and I'm a lawyer representing 21 young people who filed a lawsuit against the government. They're now suing the Trump administration and the whole fossil fuel industry for violating their fundamental constitutional rights to a climate system that will protect them and their future. So, but this, I remember, when we broadcast from Stanford University, you were suing the Obama administration. That's right. And now we have a new president and a new administration that is denying the facts of climate change. And so it's a very interesting situation where Obama admitted that these kids are facing a crisis, and now we have an administration working hand in hand with the industry to fight them. And on what grounds are you suing? It's a case under the U.S. Constitution. This is about the Fifth Amendment and these young people's rights to life, liberty, and property. It's also their right to have their public trust resources, like their atmosphere and their oceans, protected for them and for their kids and grandkids. So why don't you introduce us to some of the plaintiffs right sure, here? I'd love to. We're passing a sign that says, President Trump and fossil fuel industry, hashtag YouthGov, see you in court. So this is Hazel. She's one of our younger plaintiffs, and Hazel's from Eugene, Oregon. Hazel, can you talk about why you're here today in your T-shirt in the pouring rain? <laughs> well, I'm from Oregon, and in Oregon, all it does is rain. And it's extremely important for us young people to stand up to our government where the adults are doing nothing to prevent climate change and to stop the harmful effects of ocean acidification and sea level rising. How old are you? I'm 12 years old. How did you get involved with this lawsuit? Well, I went to a camp with Julia Olson. I met Kelsey Juliana and I became very inspired by her and many of the other plaintiffs that are now on this case and I believed in this cause. We have hope and we have the power to change. What do you think is getting in the way? I think our president currently who I feel is one of the biggest climate deniers with a pretty substantial control of power and he does not believe that science is real. He thinks it's a hoax made up by the Chinese, but we have science to prove him wrong. We will see him in court and we will win. Let's walk across. Um, tell me what your name is. Hi, I'm Nathan Baring. I'm 17 and I'm from Fairbanks, Alaska. Why are you here in Washington, D.C.? So I've lived in Alaska and Fairbanks my entire life, and um, I'm completely a winter person. I grew up on snow. I grew up with consecutive weeks of 40 below. I grew up Nordic skiing, and I could pretty much Nordic ski by the time I was able to walk. And I'm here because I'm protecting that um, those memories that I've cherished that I want to offer my children and their future and my grandchildren. And I feel like right now those uh, that ability is threatened. Why? Um, climate change is having really adverse effects on Alaska right now. Um, it just in my backyard. I mean, in my, I mean, just just around Fairbanks, um, the Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the United States, and I mean, our winters are getting shorter. Um, the wildfire season is getting longer. It's ravaging forests, um, coastal erosion, and I'm afraid that the effects that we are seeing now are only going to be amplified by the current administration and by the the uh, actions that our government is taking right now. What grade are you in? I am a junior in high school. And what kind of, um, where do your senators and Congress members stand, whether they're Republican or Democrat? So I will actually say that um, Senator Lisa Murkowski, who um, is, I would say is right now one of the most moderate Republicans in Congress, um, she has not taken a definite stand on, on, this, on this issue, um, but I will say that she is probably one of the most likely um, members of the congressional staff from Alaska to, uh, 
to take this issue seriously. Um, Senator or Representative Don Young and Senator Dan Sullivan have both um, come out pretty openly against it, but I think there's still very much some potential, and I'm looking forward to um, making bridges. And finally, you, uh, your T-shirts, your sweatshirt says yes. Columbia. Yeah, I go to Columbia in New York City. Columbia I'm a sophomore. University. Yes, um, my name's Alex Lozniak. I grew, but I actually grew up in Oregon, uh, where our Children's Trust is based. Um, and in, in Oregon, we're already facing devastating climate change impacts. We're seeing, we had, at my family's farm, we had the three hottest summers ever recorded were three years in a row. And so we lost crops, we lost some of our trees uh, due to that. And we're seeing massive forest fires, um, ocean acidification, these very delicate coastal ecosystems are already you know, going to see these devastating impacts from, from climate change. And what do you think you can accomplish here? Uh, I think we can really bring our message to decision makers here in Washington, D.C. and say our constitutional rights are on the line. Um, and our leaders have an obligation legally, constitutionally, they have to start reducing carbon emissions to protect our rights. Why a lawsuit? Well, you know, we have three branches of government in this country. We all learn in fifth grade civics. Uh, Congress isn't taking this seriously. Uh, the president thinks it's a hoax invented by China. But the courts can really look at the evidence, look at the science, and then make a decision to protect our fundamental rights. But President Trump talks about so-called judges, and I think the... Uh, yeah. Attorney General Jeff Sessions just in referring to yeah. a judge in Hawaii said, how can yeah. a person on an island in the Pacific yeah. stop the president from doing what he wants to do? Well, thankfully, we live in a country of laws not a, and not a government of individuals, not a government. The whims of President Trump or uh, Attorney General Sessions, those are going to be subject to a court that looks at the science, looks at the Constitution, and makes a legal decision to protect us. Last November, federal judge Ann Aiken in Eugene, Oregon, ruled the lawsuit could proceed. She wrote in her ruling, quote, federal courts too often have been cautious and overly deferential in the arena of environmental law, and the world has suffered for it, she said. One supporter of the lawsuit has been Dr. James Hansen, the former top climate scientist at NASA. From 1981 to 2013, he was the head of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies. He's now the director of climate science, awareness and solutions at Columbia University's Earth Institute and joins us in our New York studio. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Dr. Hansen. Good to see you again. So you've been working on this for decades, but yeah. you're particularly focused, and you've been working on the issue of climate change, on the next generation. Talk about the significance of this lawsuit. Well, uh, it's clear the other branches of our, of our government, the um, Congress and the president, are simply not going to do anything unless we get the judiciary to step in and protect the fundamental uh, rights of young people, because this is an intergenerational issue. The thing about climate is that it doesn't respond quickly as we change the composition of the atmosphere, because the ocean is four kilometers deep, the ice sheets are thick. It takes them decades and even centuries to respond. So what we're doing is building in a huge climate response that will occur over coming decades and, and centuries. And so young people and, and their children will suffer the consequences. So our political system doesn't easily deal with problems that have that sort of time scale. But the science is so clear that we have to get uh, the system to work. And that means we've got to bring the judiciary in, because they are less subject to the influence of fossil fuel money mm. than the other two branches of government. Uh, Judge Aiken's ruling was very interesting. Um, she made clear this lawsuit is not about proving that climate change is happening or that human activity is driving it. For purposes of this motion, those facts are undisputed. And again, she added, federal courts too often have been cautious and overly deferential in the arena of environmental law, and the world has suffered for it. Talk about her approach to this and allowing this lawsuit, which began during the Obama years, mind you, right, and has moved into Trump. Well, it's, uh, it's great to see uh, a judge who does recognize the, the timescale of this problem and the fact that unless they do step in, uh, it's likely to—we're going to build in consequences for young people that will be, then be out of their control. So it's, it's a clear uh, case where we need help from the judiciary. 
um, it's somewhat analogous to civil rights cases um, half a century ago. Uh, but In what way? Well, so in Brown versus Board of Education in 1954, uh, the, the judges found that civil rights of, uh, of minorities were being violated. Uh, but uh, it then took a long time before uh, finally actions, when the public began to get in the street in the 1960s and object to what was going on, then uh, action finally happened. Well, we can't afford to have such a long delay now. So uh, it's really important that this case go to court soon. Um, and it's scheduled now to go February 6th of 2018, so that's soon. I want to turn to another one of the young plaintiffs, Aji Piper of Seattle, member of Earth Guardians Rising Youth for a Sustainable Earth. What concerns me most about climate change um, is, I mean, it's a, it's a very, like, hard thing, because you have to imagine, like, the future. Um, and we know, like, if we don't act on climate change, the world's not going to, like, end in, like, a flash and a bang. But what will end up happening is either my generation will feel the effects where we have to um, fight for survival uh, on the Earth. You know, life will be very, very different. It won't be, like, we won't be as privileged to live on the Earth. Um, it, it'll be a lot harder. But then also you think about, you know, we're putting generations um, that haven't been born yet, um, and generations to come in the position where they have to deal with that, and that's not a position anybody should be put in, and it's just not fair. So it's a moral, logical thing. So that's Aji Piper of Seattle, one of the members of Earth Guardians Rising Youth for a Sustainable Earth. And I wanted to ask you, Dr. James Hansen, about this lawsuit. Um, the request that they're making is really based on your work. It asks a federal judge to order the government to write a recovery plan to reduce carbon emissions to 350 parts per million by 2100, down from 400 parts per million, and stabilize the climate system. Is this based on your numbers? And talk about this. Yeah, it's based on physics of the climate system. We we observe now that the planet is out of energy balance. There's more energy coming in from the sun than there is heat being radiated to space. And as long as that's true, the planet is going to keep getting warmer, and the climate effects that are already becoming significant will get larger and larger. So what uh, we would need to do in order to restore the planet's energy balance is reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere from its present more than 400 parts per million to about 350 parts per million. So that is not going to be easy. Uh, it's going to require that we reduce emissions of fossil fuels several percent a year and improve our agricultural and forestry practices so that we take up more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and into the soil and into the biosphere, into the forest. We need to reforest uh, regions that have been deforested. So there has been a legal development. The Trump administration, proudly anti, uh, you know, a proudly climate change denying administration, um, has asked a federal appeals court to review, George, uh, to review Judge Aiken's decision to proceed to trial. What's the significance of this? Well, it's a highly unusual move for the Court of Appeals to intervene at this point before trial has occurred. And I'm quite confident that they're going to fail in this attempt, because uh, basically what it would do is delay the process. And that's exactly what we can't let happen, because the longer that emissions continue at a high rate and continue to increase, we're building in, for young people, consequences that are going to be out of their control. So I. We expect within a few weeks to get a ruling from uh, this Court of Appeals, but I would expect that they will allow the district court to continue with the trial. Um, if this case does go to trial, will you be called to testify? I, I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. I've already written my so-called expert report to, and submitted it—we're uh, submitting it now to the court. There are also a number of state-level lawsuits, is that right, like perhaps in all the states? Well, in several different states. Uh, 
you never know where you're going to have uh, success sooner. So I think it's useful to put pressure on the political system in several different places. But the most important case is the one against the federal government. So I wanted to ask you, we're speaking, of course, in the time of this storm. Is it accurate to say—I mean, they've downgraded it from hurricane to storm, but to call it superstorm, like Superstorm Sandy? Well, it certainly was a superstorm in, in many different ways. But, yeah, and, and the human uh, role in that storm is clear. So, as an academic, as a scientist, can you talk about what it means to have a climate-denying administration? I mean, at every level. For example, there are millions of dollars available for grants. Are you seeing that drying up? Are people seeing that all over the country drying up, climate research? And is the money actually going to other places to try to disprove it? Well, I, I don't know about that. But I do know that the funding has gone up and down over the last few decades uh, in response to political considerations. Um, but the science has continued to uh, advance, and the science is so clear that there's no reason that we shouldn't be able to win the lawsuit. Uh, the science is clear enough. And the effect of the Trump administration on people's awareness, for example, almost immediately taking the words climate change and global warming off government websites, putting out the memos, you can't use these terms. Now, you're very familiar with this. Uh, let's go yeah. back decades. I mean, I was writing yeah. about you doing this, challenging the Bush administration, vacuuming the words global warming off of government websites, and you dared to testify in Congress. Talked about the trajectory of what you were finding then and where we are today, over a decade later. Yeah, well, it's really unfortunate that we haven't got action sooner, because uh, enough was known uh, decades ago that we realized that we can't burn all the fossil fuels. If we, if we burn all the oil, gas, and coal, we'll produce a different planet. Uh, we would melt all the ice on the planet, and sea level would go up uh, tens of meters. So. Uh, it's It's been clear enough uh, for a long time that we should begin to move to clean energies, to carbon-free energies. But that is resisted by the fossil fuel industry. And unfortunately, two branches of our government are heavily influenced by uh, the fossil fuel industry. Finally, um, you said that what we're seeing, the tropical storm Harvey, is clearly a result of climate change. Well, it's clearly affected by climate change. Sea level is now globally eight inches higher than it would have been without the global warming. And locally, in the regions like the Gulf and the eastern coast of the U.S., it's a, a good foot higher. So that contributed to the storm surges. But also, the amount of rainfall is increased by the human effect. A warmer atmosphere holds more water vapor, and it's a very nonlinear relation. The, the, it goes up rapidly as the temperature goes up. So the rainfall totals are affected by humans. Uh, and the storm strengths are also affected by the excess water vapor in the atmosphere. The water vapor provides the fuel for thunderstorms, tornadoes, and tropical storms. And so we've got more fuel driving stronger storms. And that's observed to be occurring, as well as understood theoretically. Isn't the word unpredictable exactly what climate chaos, climate disruption causes? They use it um, to say, you could never have predicted this. <laughs> you can't predict exactly when and where uh, events will occur, but the frequency and the strength of those events is clearly affected by uh, the changes in atmospheric composition that humans are driving. Well, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Uh, Dr. James Hansen, former top climate scientist at NASA, headed up the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, now the director of Climate Science Awareness and Solutions at Columbia University's Earth Institute. This is Democracy Now! To see Dr. Hansen's the first part of our discussion, you can go to democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.